you believe that energy that you send out, you attract that energy back? Of course, but you know, my grandmother Lily is is has died now. But before she died, she used to say to me, "Manners are free." Yeah. Like if I can't address you being respectful, what's the point? Yes. And then equally, you reciprocate it and you get it back. Like we're both sitting here, like we've known each other all our lives. Yeah, it's true. Because we're on the same frequency. Yes, we are definitely you know? for sure. And real recognizes real. I always say that. Big time. Did you come from like um, Ireland today, or, or how I flew long over. I got up at three thirty. <laughs> wow. Um, I had my bags all packed. I wrote my gratitude and my mantra and my goals. Yes. I got onto the flight. Um, I scanned and I'm able to like speed read. Uh, I went through four hundred and twenty emails. Wow. The plane was delayed slightly in the air, so it suited me. I cleared me in box. Wow. Um, we've went to the shard. We've went to Tower Forty Two, which I was telling you about in a minute. Yes. I'm sure, you'll bring that up. Um, we got a really lo lovely London cab driver brought us here. Um, we're, we're shooting a day in the life of Tom Smith, the entrepreneur. Yes. And uh, we're having a really good time. And I'm so used to being in the grind. Yeah. But I'm still working today. Of this course. is work. Of course. Um, but yeah, everything's through Spreading your message. Flew from Belfast and we're ready to go. <clears throat> Can, before we move on, what, what's the difference between Dublin and Belfast? Because I want to oh, hear it from an Irish no. person. Have, have I just said something wrong now? Yeah. What's the difference? <laughs> well, I'll get beat up. <laughs> yeah, no, I suppose it's a touchy subject. You yeah. see, you know, I we our country, Northern Ireland, yes. some people may call it Ireland, depending on what religion you are, it is a touchy subject. See, I'm a Protestant. Half of the community in Northern Ireland or Ireland are Catholic. Right. So our country is built up of six counties. I am British. My wife is a Catholic. She's Irish. It's very complicated. But um, I suppose the thing for me, I never ever thought in my lifetime that I would see peace. Mm -hmm. And now both our communities are together mm -hmm. and our community leaders have done an amazing job um, signing the Good Friday Agreement. Yes. I think it was 25 years ago. Um, and our, still... our country now has peace. So, you know, the children growing up now don't remember what it was like. We grew up in a war. Yes. We had a 30 year conflict where murder and terror was part of our daily life. Our insane, abnormal life was normal to us. Yes. You know, and uh, I, I just got goose pimples are thinking about it. I am so proud of our country. Like we are the ultimate country that bounced back. Yes. And now we're a tourist destination. We've got amazing restaurants and bars, golf courses, hotels, mm -hmm. amazing people. It's amazing because I remember in the early 90s, I used to see these on the news, like bombs going off and of these tractors, the but RA, was, uh, you know, yeah, bombers. Well, I suppose and both sides had terrorist organizations. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the guys who were in these thing, organizations decided to put the guns down mm. and they listened to the people. Yes, and now we'll have peace. And I, I, I just, it's a miracle. Yeah. But we are the definition of conflict resolution. If we can do it, any country can do it. 100%. So let's hope the Ukraine and Russia maybe find it. But because we had a really bitter war for 30 odd years and now uh, it's not there. I can't believe in this day and age that we're still going through that. Like why like two, yeah. two, two governors or two prime ministers, two people in charge of the country can't sit down and just talk it out. Why can that not happen? Communication's everything, you know, and it's just, you know, that's, I would, like, what's the point in going to war with somebody when you can make somebody your partner or your friend? And, you know, Northern Ireland, there was a famous saying, hands across the barricades. Mm. And that, that happened, you know, and it's now... Like, it's such an amazing place to but live. But you must appreciate life so much now. Oh, like, you know, because yeah. I heard about wars in the north of uh, India, Pakistan, yeah. when the partition happened, and my granddad said we lost everything, mm. and we had to walk with bare feet. You know? Yeah, like, you know, my mum and dad are both 71 years old, and they're still alive, and I'm very lucky to have them. But my dad was a postman, he's retired, He's a, he works for a big company now where he's a, a caretaker, uh, and my mum is a car worker. But, like, we, my mum and dad used to watch the news when we were children mm -hmm. because on the news we would have seen what way to go to school or what way to go to work where somebody had been killed wow. or where a bomb had went off. And it would have been, okay, my mummy would have said, Tommy, we're not going that way today. Why, love? There's been a bomb there last night. The streets blew up, so we're going to go the other way to school. Wow. And it was just so normal. Wow. Um, and the conflict took its toll on everybody. Um, and for me, it made me resilient. I remember at the age of 18, 19, I was a contractor mm. and I earned more money than everybody else that was a contractor. Why? I got paid a thing called danger money because I worked for the security forces. So we worked on police stations and army bases. So we were a target. 
And I remember one time working on the police forensic lab, the policeman come running out and says, get off the roof. And I'm like, why? He says, we've had intelligence. There's a sniper in the forest. Wow. So we were about to just start getting popped off the roof. No. So what did we do? We, we get down and had our lunch. The, the, the army helicopter went up, the police went into the forest, and I went, well, they're bound to be away now. Let's get back up and put the roof on. <laughs> what do you think of social media nowadays? Because everyone is scrolling, looking for that dopamine hit. You know, they're looking for something to make them feel good every single day. Mm. And when they see somebody on a private jet, for example, mm. or sitting in Dubai, sipping cocktails, etc., what do you think of them like in terms of they're, they're always looking for the next high? Yeah, the dopamine hit that you need is inside you. You should be looking for it internally. Social media should be there the way we use social media. We, are, we use social media as a personal brand to grow our business, to put a message out, to maybe touch on one person to help them. Um, I use social media as a tool. Like if you really want to get that high, hard work pays off. Mm -hmm. Don't be sitting scrolling on your reels. How long have you been on? Oh, fuck, I've been stuck on my reels for 45 minutes. Why? Could you not be spending 45 minutes on a business program yes. or a self-development course yes. or a business plan? Mm. Like, it doesn't exist on social media. Like, I'm a guy, I'm 49 years old. When we grew up, we didn't have mobiles. No. We didn't have social media. And if somebody's hating on me or anything like that, really, it is what it is. Yeah. If somebody is looking for that life, the Instagram life, it's fake. Go and get that life. Mm. Do two or three jobs. Mm. Work your ass off. Mm. That's where it's at. Mm. It's not on social media. That's that's a lie. Yes, yes, yes. Do you agree? Yeah, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. I mean, like I was saying the other day, people are looking for this next high. And I'm like, when was the last time you put your phone away and just enjoyed your breakfast? Oh, man. I, when did I, you I'm enjoy so... that, 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 that feeling? It's, it's hitting your tongue, the flavours, the emotions yeah. that I've got to eat today and someone in the world is not eating. But I, but there's your gratitude. You and know? I get it. You know, one of the things that I teach my clients is all about the reset, about coming off that phone that is infecting you. And one of the things that I do every Sunday, I put my phone away. Mm and see the best version of me, he always turns up on a Monday, because I've been off my phone from anything yeah. from six to 20 hours on a Sunday. I'm completely off it. You start breaking away, you feel you're in the present moment. I'm looking at my beautiful wife in the eyes. Yes. I can play with my dogs and I'm playing with my dogs. Mm -hmm. Even my little dog, I've got two dogs, Romeo and Pandora. Romeo has taught himself, if you're sitting on your phone, he knocks it out of your hand. Oh, wicked. Because he wants your attention. <laughs> And so he should. Yes. But like, I totally agree with you. Enjoying a bowl of cereal, being in the present moment, watching a sunset. Yes. That's what it's you all about. You can't put money on it. You can't buy it. You can't buy that feeling at all. You seem like somebody who's very organized. You've got <laughs> processes. Yeah. Everything's on timing. ADHD. You know, you know well, I, I can resonate with that because yeah. everything in my day, I need to know exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. Even today, coming to this podcast, I know what car I'm driving. I know I've got my training bag there. Um, yeah. So I can train sometime during the, the in the middle of the day. I've but you're an efficient, successful bag, entrepreneur you know? because of that too. Yeah, but we do it s subconsciously yeah. now because we're like, I've got to do these, these things. I need all of these things. I've got to wear them trainers and then I've got to have spare ones for the running ones and then I can yeah. change back in. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm going to dinner to... I've got my jacket, etc. How do you how do you get to that position? How do you get so organized and you know it, it runs to the outside world? It's easy, like wow, he's just appeared, he's just done this. But to you, you know the work you have to put in behind well, yeah, the scenes. And, and it's it's lovely that you have recognized that. You know, being or organized at that level does take work, but it's having an amazing support network of a gorgeous wife and two daughters that support yes. me. Yeah. It's about coming home to a family home and people just think. You know, um, a woman can do a certain job. My wife runs our house. Yeah. She's a she's an absolute warrior of a person. Mm -hmm. She helps me be organised. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, for me, I will polish my shoes if I'm wearing a suit. I'll have my watch sitting. I'll have my suit ready. Yes. I'll have my gym bag. Yeah. You know, I'll have my goals and gratitude book sitting with my pen. My coffee's ready to go. When I wake up, I'm just a complete organised machine. Yes. But it's I didn't wake up that guy. No. I built that person. No. You know, and I make every second count. And I and here's the thing, I never put time between me and a task. I just do stuff mm -hmm. there and then. Well, you've had quite a tough bringing up and we're gonna go to your story a little bit as mm -hmm. well. But somebody who hasn't had it hard in life, who's never had, who's had, yeah, I've got two great parents. They both go to their nine to five. Yeah. I've never gone without. 
there's no reason for me to do anything extra. I've had a good education. Mm. I'm in the matrix. I'm in my nine to five. But yeah, I want something a little bit maybe boring in life, but there's nothing pushing me. Like I haven't felt pain that, you know, sometimes mm. when you come from pain, you go, I don't, I never want to feel that for me or of my course. children in the future. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're working so hard, no matter how far you get away from it, is that thing that's always driving you deep, deep down. Oh, yeah. is them the young feelings. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how do you put that into somebody? How do you put that feeling mm. of, you need to go through pain. You you need this. You need to do yeah, this in your life. You have to find the trigger in somebody. You know, if it's making somebody stop smoking, if it's making somebody go to the next level, you have to find a trigger of, you know, do you want your next generation to be proud of you? Can you stand and look at yourself in the mirror and go, I love that woman or I love that guy? Find the trigger that makes him go, you know something? You're right. How important is your appearance when you walk into a room that you're feeling aesthetically that you're looking good? Does that give you more confidence? Yeah, well, you know, let's be real. You know, vanity is something that's quite normal. You should be vain. You should want to turn up where somebody's impressed that you're sharp, a guy's razor sharp, he's on the ball, nice appearance. Because if you've got a company or a brand, you are your company, you are your brand. You know, people want to do business with a male or female person who turns up and it's taking pride in, their, in, in the way they look, of course. Mm-hmm. Like, let's be real, I'm not a, and I'm not being bad. If somebody turns up a scruff, say no more. Mm-hmm. You know, do, do they value themselves? Probably no. Do they value you then as a client? Probably not. They you need know. to look after the vehicle first yeah. to give outward love to something else, etc. wow. And I've also got a beautiful wife that I wanna make sure that she's still <laughs> happy with this dude here. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> She will be bad. There's a little competition going on, maybe. <laughs> yeah, well, we both train probably 10 or 12 times a week each. Wow, wow. Yeah, she trains that. twice a day, I train twice a day. That. What does that do for your brain? Forget your physical appearance. What does it do for your brain training? Huge release. like You know, um, a massive boost for confidence. Really amazing for your mental health. Cardio and vascular fitness too. Like, I've dropped a bit of size recently because I'm doing so much cardio, but my strength is still right there on point through the roof. And um, it also really helps your confidence. People think, oh my goodness, that's a confident guy. Confidence is like going to the gym. It takes constant work, but being healthy helps that. It's just win, win, win. It's all a work in progress. You've got to put yeah. the ingredients in all the time with consistency over time. And you it's, will get it's there. Like, it's like going after goals. You know, people are like, well, you know, it isn't working. It isn't working yet. Mm. Keep going. Then you'll start seeing the results, whether it's in the gym, in the work, in the self-development. Mm. People just do that too much. Tap out. Stop tapping out. Keep keep going. Love that. I love that. It's funny. We just had MVP, Michael Venom Page. He's one of the number one Bellator's champion here the other day. Right. So you're talking about MMA and tapping out. This well, I, I coached Molly McCann oh. from UFC for two years. Oh, wow. Molly Meatball, yeah. How was that? Amazing, yeah. Um, a totally incredible, amazing female entrepreneur that I had the you know, the, the, the chance and the luck to work with. She's still a very close friend of mine and now she's became a superstar. Mm-hmm. Um, she, she, she has always been the amazing athlete. All I done was help her with her mindset training. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm very proud to see her implement it. I did a session with her um, in London before she won with a spin and elbow and things like that. Um, but she was, you know, like a daughter to me. The two of us are that close. Oh. Bless. You know, and uh, she's a pride of Liverpool, and um, and for a, uh, you know, for me, I just love seeing another woman be a female warrior. It's a big thing. She's just an amazing athlete, and such a funny, amazingly educated person too. She's a very clever woman. Nice. Proud nice. to call her my friend. <laughs> you know. Brilliant. Tom, let's go a little bit back to your story. So you're in your early twenties. You become a property entrepreneur where mm. you're buying doing up houses, flipping them. Did you have to create, did you have to leverage people at that time? Did you have to get builders involved, banks yeah, involved? Well, how, yeah, how did you know I, about all of that stuff? I, I just, I always learned on my feet, you know, um, I ended up with a thing called a hunting line where I could just walk in, sign a check and buy a house. Um, I had a team of guys doing stuff for me and very quickly you'll go through people who are unreliable and you'll end up with a brilliant team. So we have brilliant plasters, tailors, sparks. But then I remember doing a house in Belfast and I was about to sell it for 250,000. Now, this is in a part of Belfast that at one time you could have bought houses for 5,000 pound right. during the war. Mm. And I remember then everything just crashed and the credit crunch came and it was like, oh my goodness, what the world just ended back 2007, 2008. 
So then I decided I'm not going to let this environment control me. It's go time. And I disappeared and went to Dubai for a few years. And I was doing land deals and stuff over there. Um, but when I was living in Dubai, it's not the Dubai that you guys see. I'm talking, there were seven towers. There were, it was called the original seven in the marina. There was Jumeirah Beach Hotel and the Burj Al Arab. There was no downtown. Sheikhside Road had hardly anything on it. Mm -hmm. It was just desert. Um, but I lived in a hotel, the famous hotel called the Grosvenor House. There's the Grosvenor House in London, Grosvenor House in Dubai. But half of the hotel was a hotel and half was service departments. So I fell in love with this service department idea. Mm -hmm. So when I came back to Ireland, I came back with the idea, I'm gonna open an apart hotel. So for a whole year, I come back and I walk the streets. And this is the bit that I want everybody to get. It's about resilience. It's about never giving up. Because I'd been away, people didn't like you then. Oh, sure, Tom's away in Dubai. Who does he think he is? Mm -hmm. You know, the small mentality. Yes. So I decided no matter what happens, I'm gonna do this. So I walk the streets of Belfast, Ireland, the UK, major cities, Liverpool, London, Birmingham. I put boots on the ground and wrapped the doors, made the phone calls, shook the hands, sent the emails, but I was told no for a year.